Okay, this video is uh, about hydrogen fuel cells. Um, there's two things that I want you to do at some point uh, while you're taking your notes. Uh, one of those things is to log into my project lead the way, go to activity 1.3.1, solar hydrogen systems, uh, and then go to the reversible fuel cell users guide. Um, we are going to be using a fuel cell that runs on water uh, to power a VEX car. Uh, so it's important that you uh, read through uh, the directions on how to use it. Uh, specifically where it says preparing the reversible fuel cell for use. Um, read through these directions um, so you have some idea of uh, what's going to happen. Uh, also I'm going to include a link for this video. This is a teacher named Tyler DeWitt and he does a really good job explaining how fuel cells work. Um, so he uses a, an analogy to explain what's going on. Uh, so I'm going to briefly explain it in this video, uh, but I need you to watch this video because he does a better job of making sense of what's going on. Okay, so to our PowerPoint, um, I'm going to quickly talk about hydrogen fuel cells. Um, and then you need just need uh, the basics in your engineering notebook. So um, for in our quest for energy uh, throughout the history of humans, um, things started off as we just needed something to burn because when you burn something it releases heat uh, and we can use that heat for cooking or for boiling water or turning that water into steam to generate electricity um, so uh, things originally started off as uh, we were looking for things to burn um, and then as time progresses we transport fuel around and um, the thing that we're looking for is having a lot of energy uh, but not weighing a lot so uh, coal is m a better choice than wood because we get more energy out of it we could burn uh, hotter or longer for the same amount of weight that we have in wood so coal became a better option uh, than just um, just burning trees uh, oil is even more efficient uh, gives us more energy than uh, what coal does. Uh, natural gas uh, is even more and so what's really happening is the amount of hydrogen in the fuel source is increasing and what's happening through time is the amount of hydrogen um, that we are uh, using in the fuel is increasing and increasing so it makes sense that at some point we we'll just go to straight hydrogen uh, that would kind of uh, make you know, the most efficient fuel source that we could get. Uh, there's problems with that. Hydrogen is extremely reactive, so just having a tank of hydrogen in your car probably isn't a good idea, because if you ever got into a car accident, uh, that tank might blow up, and so um, it's not very safe. So uh, our fuel cells that we're going to talk about take advantage of using hydrogen as the fuel source, uh, but not having a giant tank of explosive hydrogen gas on board. Uh, so the uh, first couple slides of the PowerPoint are the history of engines. Uh, so we had steam engines powered by burning wood or coal. Uh, then we have an internal combustion engine powered by uh, burning oil. So our progression is going for something that's pure hydrogen and using something called a fuel cell. Uh, the idea behind a fuel cell uh, comes from a cool experiment. If you have a glass of water and there's uh, like some salt in there to allow electricity to pass through it, and then you put two test tubes upside down in the water with a cathode and an anode, uh, which are positive and uh, negative uh, electrodes. Uh, when you pass electricity through it, our H2O, our water, will separate into its two elements, which are hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, which are both uh, flammable. So uh, we could take water, split it apart, and get hydrogen and oxygen gas. And then we could use that hydrogen gas as a fuel cell. So um, what's uh, what we could do is we can make hydrogen this way, but uh, we have to expend some energy to do this. We have to send electricity through and then uh, burn the hydrogen on the other end. Um, so this isn't super efficient because we have to expend energy to split things apart. So as time progresses, we've uh, tried to figure out more and more efficient ways of doing that. And uh, so I cut these out of your PowerPoint just because these are just uh, specific things, um, but we could replace anything that uses an internal combustion engine with a fuel cell. 
so I skipped over all these. Um, so this is your next slide. Uh, so there's different types of fuel cells, um, but all of them kind of have uh, the same purpose, and that's to try to uh, get hydrogen on its own. So we're in a different way trying to extract hydrogen from something, whether it's water or some other chemical. Um, for our fuel cells, this is the general chemical reaction. Since you're all in chemistry, hopefully some of these words are um, familiar. So an anode, that is our, our positive uh, end uh, of our battery system, and a cathode is the negative end. Um, so uh, at some point you're going to be doing something called a redox reaction um, and half reaction. So this is the half reaction of our redox reaction. Um, and uh, this is the overall thing. So basically we're taking water and sp uh, splitting it apart or putting water together or hydrogen and oxygen together to make water. Uh, and then this is the uh, most important slide of uh, our, our video here. So um, this is the essence of what a fuel cell is. And this is what the other video that I'm going to have you watch explains better than I'm going to explain. Um, essentially we've got um, hydrogen on one side and oxygen on the other and the a fuel cell works by letting hydrogen through but just the positive part just the proton uh, if the electrons want to join it the electrons have to go through a wire and then through uh, a resistor or a motor or a battery or something uh, and then then the electrons once they pass through the resistor can rejoin the hydrogen on the other side uh, and then once the hydrogen gas joins the oxygen gas uh, then we get water so we're uh, taking hydrogen and making the electrons in the hydrogen do the work for us so to do that there's something in the middle called uh, a catalyst and a catalyst is a chemical that can uh, that isn't used up in a chemical reaction uh, so our catalyst is able to split hydrogen um, or the electrons away from hydrogen so this is a, a kind of a close-up view uh, we've got our catalyst in the middle uh, our hydrogen goes through uh, but the electrons split to the hydrogen and the protons keep going through so the protons go all the way through to the other side but the electrons have to take the long way and we take advantage of that and use those electrons uh, to, to power our system just like any other circuit. Um, so uh, one important note is that our catalyst uh, is uh, in part of the element platinum. Uh, so platinum is the, the thing that allows us to strip the electrons away. Uh, so the good news is, is we've got something that'll strip it away. The bad news is platinum super expensive it's kind of a rare metal on earth so um, that makes our uh, fuel cells kind of expensive because uh, we're basically sticking something kind of expensive in there so um, uh, current area of research is trying to figure out uh, another catalyst that we could use uh, that doesn't use platinum so um, that's about uh, the uh, most of the detail that we're going to go in in terms of uh, the fuel cell and how it works right now. Um, later on, we are going to uh, dive into something called thermodynamics, and we'll take a closer look at uh, these slides here. Um, but for right now, just understanding how a fuel cell works is our goal. So we're making electrons in the hydrogen do the work for us when they rejoin with the oxygen.